Hey everyone, we had an awesome two-year-old buck harvested tonight. This buck here is just gorgeous. Uh, two and a half years old. Beautiful deer. So what we're going to do tonight is uh, I'm going to do a video and we're going to show a little bit on how we cape them out. That's not the cause of the video. But every buck harvested on our farm has to be caped out. Well, that's what we do. And we pull the brain stem. The lymph nodes are down in here. And we have to send in a sample of the hide to the Minnesota Veterinary Diagnostic Lab. Every deer on the farm that gets harvested, butchered, or dies in any way, shape, or form has to be tested for CWD. So we're going to show you what that process is about. So when I, when I cape out a deer, some guys like to use a small little X-Acto knife. I used to like to use a big buck knife. You can see this thing's been wore down over the years. I've probably done 50 bucks with it. It's wore down. It's a nice knife. Sharpen and sharpen and sharpen. Here's where the first cut is. I've already done it. We open it up like this, open it up on the back side. I do a Y cut from the back of the neck. I come up here and I go right towards the antler. Then I turn and I come right here and go right towards the antler. We're going to open that up with a Y cut. We're going to peel this forward now and I'll show you as we're going. So when I'm caping them out, I like the big knife, like I said. I get in here and I kind of use it like a can opener. Some guys laugh at me and say it's too big. It works good for me. I just take the blade from underneath and I go around under the burr. And sometimes if I get too close and it gets in trouble and I can't go underneath, I'll just turn the knife around, hold it like this, and I'll go right on the top and I'll just press down without cutting any hair. And I can, I can go in there and loosen that up all the way around and cut as I go. We've been cutting, peeling next to the bases here, cutting it around, cutting it on the other side. We're getting around the bases here. I gotta have Brody hold it because I, I push on it. I don't want the head sliding all over. Take my knife and I kind of just work it in there. Like I said, I like a bigger knife. I'm fine with it. Some guys like a smaller knife. It's whatever you get used to. I like having lots of leverage to get in there and separate things. It takes a little patience. Got it free around there. And now we'll go to the other side. Flip it over, Brody. And we'll get this one separated, which we already do. Now we're gonna pull everything down around the eyes. So we're, we're peeling it down here. We're getting it down the back side. We're gonna take this ear off. And the ear, once we start peeling, we're gonna hold it close, our knife, and we're gonna cut right off. This is the ear cartilage, the canal there. We're cutting right through it. We're just gonna cut the, you know, I've cut the ear off. We're gonna keep making strides down towards, we're gonna to get to this eye here in a minute. We gotta be really slow and careful there. I'm gonna show you that. Now we're gonna keep working around and get the neck. So we, we've made progress there. Now we'll flip it around to the other side. Other ear again real quick here. Hold on Brody. And I've already gone past that ear now. That ear is free. And now we'll Go next to the eye here. This is kind of tricky and painstakingly slow. I usually gotta sharpen my knife somewhere in between when I've been rubbing on the bone. So I take my finger and I stick it up into the eye and I try to get a hold of it so I can see where I need to be. When I get to a certain point, that's what I'm gonna do. And so here now, I'm going to pull, and I want to see the eye. I'm going to get through there and grab the eye lid. At some point, I want to see the eye, and not the eye. I don't want to cut any skin there. So we're getting close to it. There's my thumb now. So I can cut right next to my thumb. Doing okay, I can see the eye. I'm gonna keep peeling. Dylan's got the camera so close, I'm bumping the camera, but it should be good footage. And again, if you don't wanna see what we're doing, it's too graphic, you know, it's taxidermy work. It's what every head mount looks like. I guess a guy shouldn't be watching. You, can, you have the right to shut the video off if it's too graphic. We gotta stay close to that eye or we're gonna wreck it for the head mount.
Now I've made it around the eye, and as you guys can see now, that eye has no tears in it. It's gonna be good. They're gonna put a glass eye in there, and they're gonna do it, okay? But this tear duct is deep. We don't wanna cut that tear duct off, so we gotta be careful now going into that tear duct. And I gotta do a little, do the other eye before I get there. So we're done around the basis. We've got down, we've made it around the second eyeball, and we're trying to worry about this tear duct here. We don't want that to get cut apart. So we're down to that point, and what we gotta do now is I gotta be very careful, and you gotta give me room, room to use my knife. We gotta get really close to the, with the bone in here. Stay close to the bone when you cut the tear duct. And again, you guys, I'm not a professional. I've, I've probably done about 50 deer. There's a million taxidermists that might have a better idea. I'm just sharing information. It's free. If you don't like it, well, I do it a different way. But, but this is how we do it. There, I've successfully gone past that tear duct. Tear duct is not cut. Taxidermist is gonna do a good job on that, okay? I'm not a taxidermist, I just cape out what we have on the farm. Okay, Okay. so I, I kind of messed up here a little bit. I need a measurement for the taxidermist. He needs to know from the corner of the eye, he's gonna order a foam mount to the tip of the nose. This one here, corner of the eye to the tip of the nose, I'm gonna say seven and a quarter. We need that measurement. The other measurement we need is once we get down to this point and the hide's off, we're gonna measure it from the back of the head around the neck under these two muscles right here and get this measurement. And then I guess they say heavy swell, full rot, do whatever in the order of form. Okay, so now we're getting to the inside cheek area. His jawline goes up right here and here's where he chooses cud. So we're gonna, we gotta skin this out and I wanna get access to the inside of his mouth. So we're gonna pinch this out and we're gonna go like this. There's the inside of his mouth. All these little fingers right here are the inside of his cheek. They when he chooses cut, he has, what, four stomachs? He, he uh, catches and burps up his stomach, his food, and then he uh, catches it in his cheek. These little fingers here, he rolls it around in his mouth and he chews it up between these teeth. So he's called a ruminant. And that's what's going on there. So we want to stay nice and close to the cheek there for the taxidermist. So now we've got the bottom jaw, top jaw, and I gotta keep cutting here and keep this for the taxidermist, keep it all nice close to the skin. Bottom jaw here, we're gonna separate that right now. And we've gotta pull, and make sure we don't cut the hide. We're gonna get it, some of you guys have maybe done this 100 times, some of you guys have never seen it. You might wanna know how to cape your own deer. I don't know, maybe there's 100 videos online. But here's, this is how we do it. There, I got the bottom jaw separated, that'll be good for the taxidermist, we're gonna flip it over. Brody's doing a good job holding it steady. And the nose here is kind of tricky too. Straighten everything out. I'm gonna peel, peel, keep cutting. And once I get to where the soft tissue is on the nose, okay, I'm gonna make a cut into it. I'm not going to, you know, go all the way to the end. And once I get to this soft tissue here now, and I'm about there, okay? So soft tissue, as soon as I see I'm there, now I think I am. We're gonna cut down into the soft tissue. We're cutting into his nose, nasal cavity. And uh, the taxidermist is gonna fine tune that a little bit. I'm gonna cut off here. And I'm going down, making a, hor uh, a horizontal cut here, I think we'll call it. I'm gonna cut the nose right off. And again, I'm staying as close as I can. And we're gonna call this one successfully Caped out deer. Ready for the taxidermist. We'll roll that up. When we put this in the hide, my taxidermist says he doesn't want the hair outside and froze that way. He wants me to roll this inside out with the skin showing and the hair inside. Why does he want that? When he drops it in, he'll have it froze solid. He'll drop it in a tub of hot water to thaw it out and start working with it right away. He doesn't want to have to wait for the hot water to get through this six hours later. It takes forever to thaw getting through the hide. So we turn it in inside out. Okay, now we're gonna show you how to, I have to send in the brainstem on every animal that we have. We're gonna make a cut here. Okay, that's good. 
So when I start cutting now, if I try to go straight down, it's gonna slide like this, it's gonna slide. So what I, I cut the meat back, but I actually turn it away from the antlers a little bit, and I get a little scratch going. So now I got a little cut there. Now I straighten my saw out. Hold on tight, Brody. And we've got the antlers off. Okay, now everybody, Still kind of graphic and gross, but I want people to know because people think farm grazed deer, we need more laws. We got a lying Lou Cornicelli, the guy with no credibility. That guy thinks we need more rules. Here's what we're doing on every deer. We have to pull out the brain stem. We're showing you that next. So here's the brain. Brain stem's back in there. Every deer that dies natural or whatever, hunted, butchered, slaughtered, this is what we do. So the first thing I do in removing the brain stem, we got this out, the brain stem's sitting right back down here. I peel a little bit and I, and I go like this and I cut this cartilage. And again, there's people that have a better way of doing it. I saw a guy do it, it was the slickest thing I've ever seen. Well, I didn't learn how to do it that way. And this is what I got used to, so this is what I do. So to here I, I am, take a plastic spoon and I peel this back just a little bit. So I can see back in there, and I hold it with the spoon, but pull it forward. You can see the brain stem has been cut already, and I pick it up, and I take it out very carefully. There's my brain stem. This is the part they want, right here. So we're gonna take this out, the whole thing, I'm gonna set it on the table here, and I'm gonna trim it up a little bit, because they don't really need this. This stuff here they don't need. They don't need this. There's the brain stem. We'll leave this on top for them. Stem, right there, everything perfect. Goes in the cup, and then I add a little formaldehyde, we'll do that in a minute. Now I need lymph nodes. So the lymph nodes are way down in here. I gotta do this on every deer. So I cut this big muscle off first. We cut that off. We're just gonna peel it back. We don't need that. Cut the muscle off on the other side. We're going for lymph nodes now. We got the throat in here. That's kind of in the way. We're gonna cut the throat out of there. Tough, tough, tough stuff to cut. If you find the right spot, it's not so tough. Now, throat's coming out. And lo and behold, there's a lymph node right there. So I'm gonna pluck that bad boy out, make a little cut right there. I got the lymph node on the one side ready to go. They kind of like us to take these things these little black modules, they're normal. I don't know what they're called. There's my lymph node. I can have a little meat on there. They kind of like us to cut them a little bit, just make a little slice in them, like that, so the formaldehyde can get in there. Got one lymph node. Now we're digging on the other side. You can see it right there. There it is, it's ready to go. Here, let me see again. There's the lymph node sitting right there on each side of the throat. The throat was up here, I cut it out. Boom, there's both lymph nodes. So we're gonna reach in there. Cut the lymph node out. There it is, that one's been cut already. Okay, we got the little black modules, that don't mean nothing, they can go in the cup. And then we've got formaldehyde. This is it right here, given to me. Every deer that we have harvested on the farm, we send in the brain stem, we send in two lymph nodes, we have to send in a sample of hair. We have to do all of this. Lying Lou Cornicelli does just a couple deer a year in comparison to all the thousands and hundreds of thousands of deer in Minnesota. But he wants us to be outlawed. He says we're not doing enough. I've been doing this for about 12 to 15 years. Never had a positive test. I think the rules are fine. They're, they're good rules. They're strong. I have a closed herd. Never gonna have another deer on my property. How am I gonna get CWD? An eagle has to fly over and drop it into my pen or one of Lou's deer, the DNR deer, have to bring it to my property. That's the only way I could ever get it. That's gonna come back, clean as can be. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching, we got more good videos coming up. Lots of good ideas this fall. Thank you. So not only do I gotta send in brain stem and lymph nodes, gotta do that, in formaldehyde, I also have to send in the state ID tag 
my farm tag, and a sample of hair. They gotta go in with every deer. So we take all of this stuff, we drop it into a bag, pop it in our freezer until we ship it off. We're doing a lot of work here. We care about our deer, we care about the wild deer, but we're doing so much work and the state of Minnesota is not doing a lot. I had a guy this fall, he, I'm gonna call him, he said he'd do an interview. He had a deer that was suspect for CWD. The DNR called him and said, hey, your deer is suspect, and you know deer season's coming up, we're pretty busy, so we might get out there after deer season sometime. Your, your lymph nodes were suspect, and then we'd like to come get the brain stem. So you know what they told him? Yeah, um, after deer season, three weeks later, if you could just take the brain and a chunk of meat and you could get it to us, that'd be great. They didn't, they didn't, we're doing a video on that one next week. Stay tuned, it's unbelievable.